Hi, in this video, we're going to be learning about how to build a GPT like user interface using HTML, Tailwind CSS, and JavaScript only. We will also be looking at different color themes, such as the dark mode and the colorful pastel mode. We will be learning about how to use live server and live share extensions in VS Studio Code. Also, we're going to be learning about how we can see, make the system always scroll to the bottom while keeping the footer. As you see, you can scroll away from it, but while it is responding, it is always the bottom. I actually sent two messages. Interesting. You can actually do that. We'll be looking at how we can make calls directly from JavaScript without any imports necessary so we can run in the browser. It also has conversational memory, as you can see. Of course, features streaming responses. We'll see about how we can use Tailwind CSS to give it styling rather than traditional CSS, but we'll also be using some traditional CSS as well. All these code files, including the three different HTML coloring, is going to be HTML different coloring format, will be available at Patreon. The link will be in the description. In my Patreon, I have over 90 posts and project files. So feel free to take a look at that. All in all, I think this is a really nice template to start with your projects. Let's just begin by taking a look at the HTML. Our HTML is pretty simple and short. Uh, I have added additional comments so you can read about what the, each element is doing and the Tailwind CSS. We are using the CDM version of Tailwind CSS. This is not recommended to be used in production. I was going to use Mark, but I'm going to leave that for another video. So we have just a general HTML and body styling for height and margin. And then we just have a main body class and then a main section and then a footer to hold our chat input. And then we are referring to our script.js file, of course. The Tailwind CSS is really convenient because the regular CSS can get really long. And sometimes when it gets long, you have to actually have it in a separate CSS file. But with Tailwind CSS, although it's a bit difficult to read, you can have everything here in the HTML file. As you can see, for example, you can see what each Tailwind CSS function is doing for the statements. For example, we're adding four units of padding with this, like P4, and adding a gray background with this BG gray 300, and overflow Y auto, so that actually when our messages fill up the screen, it scrolls. So all, overall, Tailwind CSS is very cool. Take a look at that. In our JavaScript file, we are defining a messages list so that we can append to it and keep track of the conversation. And in the, with the display messages, we are getting the user input from the input text input box right here in the main section from the HTML element. And we are getting the user message element. So we can insert the user message onto the browser right here when it's ready. We are then appending it with some styling. And we are also styling and coloring to actually color the text black. And then next one is should scroll. We check actually where we are in the screen now what this will do is actually it will check once the messages are full and the scrolling is possible if we are actually at the bottom or we are giving about a 40 buffer 40 pixel i believe and as you see as long as we are at the bottom it'll keep scrolling to the bottom but as soon as we snap out of it then we are free to actually browse through so it doesn't force us to always snap to the bottom and we are appending the user message element. And now we check if should, if should scroll, where we have checked whether if we are at the bottom of the page, then actually it scrolls to the bottom. Then right here. And then we are appending the user message to the message history. And then we await the chat response, right, with the user input. And after that, once we receive the GPT's response, we clear the text input box so that you can write a new message. And get chat response is another function. We're going to talk about that. We do have a new, we do add an event listener to the message input box. So that actually if we, en if we enter on our keyboard, so that the message is submitted. But if we press the shift key and enter, then actually we make a new line such as like this. So we can actually create new lines and continue typing. You set your API key like this when, since you're working in the browser, I'm here defining it explicitly. I'm going to revoke this key, so don't worry about that. 
but you can enter your key like this but a more ideal solution would be actually to store it in a local storage but i'm going to leave that for another video then we define the api url this is the completions endpoint for fetch requests then we start defining our get chat response and then we're going to make a fetch request to the api url which we have defined right here to open ai our method is post you are we are assigning our api key which we have defined right here we are using three gpt 3.5 turbo you can use gpt4 as well we are giving it the messages which we have been appending which we have started defining at the top of our script and then we set the streaming through i just wanted to quickly mention before moving on that in the as you can see i'm actually being able to preview my code html whatnot the website directly in vs code to be able to do that just search search for live share and install it i actually have the i believe i have the nightly version installed anyway once you install live share and you're in an index.html file you can come here right here show preview and then you can actually see the preview of that file also if you install live server you will get this go live button right here and when you click on it when you have your html file open then it will actually pop out and open your browser open it up in a browser window like this so this is pretty cool it is both of these will update automatically as soon as you change any of the files so that's really wonderful you can find all the videos i've created you can browse through them and you can actually search for them at echohive.live ai academy you can read their description and find the code download links to patreon i have over 140 videos so this makes it convenient to find the right one for you it's echohive.live once we have defined our call then we define a reader create a reader to read the response body as a stream then we create a decoder to decode the response body as utf8 then we create the assistant message because we're going to receive chunks right tokens and we're going to append to it and then we create an assistant message element because we're going to append that to the html and we say while through we await the reader and then we say chunk decoder dot decode value decode the value of the response body as utf8 so it was a this is so much easier on python so if you're running your calls on server side this is so much more simpler but then you have to deal with a fast api flask or something like that uh, so I just wanted everything to take place in the browser. But anyway, I think this is just makes it convenient for quick experimentation, especially. And also if you store the API key in a local storage with a sessions or something like that, then actually this just might be a viable approach to building apps. But do further research to make sure, of course, my JavaScript is definitely not perfect. I just want to let you know. And then since the uh, chunks are ar arriving to us uh, as like an array, then we're going to loop through them with a for loop. If we actually take a look at how to stream completions for Python in OpenAI's cookbook GitHub repository, somewhere here is actually the object, the objects that are returned with the streaming completions. As you see, these are with each chunk is like this. So we do have to check for a lot of things. For example, we are essentially looking for content, which is under Delta, which is under choices. Okay. The content right here, but the first one is the role assistant. So we have to skip that. And at the end, we get a done object, which is not present here, but then we have to also check for that. Also, we have to check for deltas that are actually empty. That's why our code is quite long. Because we, we say remove any leading data, right? So we first remove that. We are checking for done line. If the clean line is done, then we skip to the next iteration of the loop. If the clean line is empty, we skip. So we are doing quite a lot of checks. And then we try parse the clean line with JSON that parse. If the parse line has choices and the length of the choice array is greater than zero, then we check for that. And then we say choice is the parse line choice is the first element here because of this as you see choices it's a list so we're looking for the first element and now we're going to look at delta's content element so this is pretty much what we're doing and then append the assistant message because we say choices delta content append to the assistant message and create a new paragraph element to display the assistant message if it doesn't exist so if we check if no assistant message with the exclamation mark then Assistant message element is document.create element, paragraph element, HTML. Assistant message element, class list add, we add some styling with class. 
and then we just append to the main section as a child. Then we update our messaging history. But before updating the system message, check if the user has already near the bottom. So we do a check for should scroll again. And then we update the inner text with the system message. Then we see if it is should scroll, then we scroll to the bottom. This was the behavior I was demonstrating earlier. And then we reset the system message and assistant element variables for the next complete session like this. And then we try to catch any errors and print it to the console for on both occasions so that we have a better idea if we do get an error and how to fix it. This is pretty much it in a nutshell. Like I said, all these four files are going to be available in Patreon. Link will be in the description. And let me just display it again. We have a light theme, dark theme, and also some kind of pastel coloring. The pastel coloring, they do have some regular CSS. For example, here, you can actually modify these colors. Background colors is pastel yellow. Let's try purple. Yeah, see, as you see, you can easily modify this. Let's say this is green. Did something change. Maybe let's turn green to the yellow. Yeah, yeah, I guess that didn't work, but I believe this is for the. So you can take a look. Uh, like I said, I tried to comment it out extensively so you can actually play around with it. Uh, so I'll be making more of these HTML, CSS, JavaScript videos too. We're going to introduce Python into it as well at some point because. In this implementation, this JavaScript code is entirely running on the browser, so we really have no way of accessing any files or anything like that, have to do embeddings or any other cool things. But this is great for what it is. I really enjoyed building it, and I hope you will too. Thank you, and see you next time. Thank you for watching. If you like my content, you can actually go to Echo Hive AI Academy at echohive.live and search and browse all my videos. You can find their descriptions here. You can watch them here as well and also find the code download links. And the code for this for this video will be available at Patreon. Link will be in the description. Thank you for watching and see you next time.